Blade Runner esque. We got Gar. So this is a Terrapin, uh, which uh, again uh, isn't in 3.0, but is um, going to be just after 3.0. Although I think we should probably go ahead and shouldn't really. Let's, let's start the, the small amount, right? The new Aurora, perhaps. <laughs> Welcome to Robert Space Industries. Enjoy the ride. System check. Engines are on. All right, let's, let's take a take off the flag. flag. I'm not sure we're going to let you actually get this close to the populated areas, but we let you guys do it. <laughs> seeing here is ArcCorp, uh, which is essentially a, you know, a, a full-size, Earth-sized planet completely covered with man-made structures and at a real scale. So you're seeing everything to the horizon um, fully covered. Um, you can basically fly all over ArcCorp. You can see up in the distance another city club. So that up in the distance is area area 17, and we're flying over the suburbs now. So this is pretty much Coruscant. And this is this is uh, our engine wizard engine wizards in, in the Frankfurt office. Uh, who's doing this? So, Mar Marco Cabrera and Alex Ramati, who will be out here in a bit. And actually, area um, 17 over there is about 25 kilometers in the distance. So, we'll just kind of. kind of head over to it.
longer term that we're going to be building on our bigger, more populated planets, multiple uh, landing zones. So Area 18 is one of them. Area 17 would be potentially another one. And we'd have quite a few around Arcorp because it's such a big planet and the detail and the scale that we're going for. Uh, we sort of feel like it has to be more than just one landing zone or two landing zones and then nothing else on the rest of the planet. So it has to feel believable at the scale of our universe. And that's always quite a challenge, but some of the technology that we've been building is allowing us to do that, as you can sort of see from uh, the visuals that we're flying around here, where we literally have a planet covered by a city. So uh, Arcorp is one of our planets. Let's uh, gonna head up to space, I think, here in a bit, Glenn. We can have a little view of Area 17 as we go beside it, though. I don't think any other game has quite got this level of scale. Don't worry, we're working hard on it for you guys. settled our uh, industrialized planets have quite a will have quite a few space stations in geosynchronous orbit so that when uh, say someone with a, a large ship like a hull C or a D brings in cargo we go to the space station and then the cargo can be offloaded and brought down to the planet um, so we're just going to head to one of them it's built using a, a new modular space station uh, setup uh, and uh, it's actually Beyond 3.0, you're going to see a lot of space stations and variety, and we'll talk a little bit about how we're going to put them together and build them up in around the Stanton system and the other systems as we expand out. And the key is it's all, you know, we're not, there's, you know, there's no loading screens or anything. It's, we just flew up from 
the city we were down in area 18 then we were flying around these huge skyscrapers and now we're just heading up to the orbital uh, space station Glenn's just showing off. This would be, like I said, one of the places where cargo would come in, it would be unloaded, and then there would be NPCs or a player could potentially take smaller amounts down. But to give you an idea of this is, you know, the beauty of the sort of Star Citizen 64-bit precision is like we fully, fully, you know, it's all there. We're up here on a space station looking down on the planet. Jump? I don't know, Glenn. Should we jump or not jump? Nah, I don't think so, right? Well, no, his, his, uh, his EVA counters the gravity. Plus, gravity is much weaker up here than it's down on the planet. But the gravity is actually properly simulated all the way through, based on your distance from the center of the planet. You want to get up? All right. So inside, in, inside these, these are all uh, got interiors, and in fact, um, we'll we'll show you kind of how we build them in a in a second. Uh, but yeah, just give you the idea of the scale, because you know this space station didn't look that big from a while ago, and of course, see how big it is now that we're up close. Uh, and if we go through here, there'll be uh, an elevator we get through on the other side that would get us into the, the atrium. So we'll show you a bit of that in a little bit. Um, let's uh, let's kind of continue on with our journey.
that though. Now that doesn't look very big, that's because we're sort of zoomed uh, out on the star map. But Lowville is 23 million, 205,500, whatever that is, 968, 66 now, uh, 68 kilometers away, uh, which is quite a long distance. So should we start our quantum? Space station, looked down at our core, then quantum travel, flew through the space. We haven't done any loading, it's all in the same star system. And now uh, we're uh, in orbit, like high orbit actually, well, quite a ways out from uh, Hurston, uh, which is another planet inside the Stanton system. Arc Corp was owned by, is owned by Arc Corp. In the Stanton system, the UE had leased each one of the major Earth type planets to different corporations. In this case, it's Hurston Dynamics. Uh, which primarily is a weapons manufacturer. And Hurston itself is the kind of, it, it's the sort of planet that is what happens when there is no regulation and there's no environmental protection. So it's probably uh, going to be like China in 100 years or America after the EPA has been dismantled. Uh, but uh, so let's just head down. Uh, and, uh, you know, this will be an example of a different style of planet and uh, you know ecosystem biome and it's still we're still early days on this because obviously uh, you know we're still getting three out, three zero out views of the environment and the sort of procedural uh, planet team have been working on Arc Corp and uh, Hurston because they finished all their three zero stuff and this is we're preparing for the next uh, major release um, all this stuff but there's still a ways to go so remember all this is work in progress and there'll be a lot it'll be a lot better and cooler uh, when you actually get your hands on it um, in the future, so we're just gonna we're just gonna do a short distance uh, short distance quantum travel. So we actually do allow we have two kinds of quantum travel in three zero and beyond. One is a long distance one, like the one we went between Arc Corp and Hurston between major celestial bodies. And we have short distance 